Welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. This week we had Kevin and Kian from Sadnaz for some awesome CEDH action. So let's see what they brought and what our guys brought. First up is Ethan on the partner pairing of Jessica and Ishai. This Just Guy deck hopes to slam the murder bird on the table and have it grow huge from opponents casting spells. This allows him to pressure life totals and distract from his other plans of breach combos. He keeps an opening hand with Flooded Strand, Steam Vents, Ancient Tomb, Talisman of Creativity, Silence, Giver of Runes, and Kedis. Next up is Jason on Rocco. This Naya deck plans to use its commander to tutor out combo pieces, the main ones being Dockside Extortionist and Teamer Sabretooth for infinite mana. He starts the game with the Savannah, Plateau, City of Brass, Mox Diamond, Carpet of Flowers, Deafening Silence, and Endurance. Our third player today is Kian, playing the partners of Krom and Timna. This deck, also known as Blue Farm, hopes to grind out a lot of value using both of its commanders to draw cards, and then win with either Underworld Breach or Thassa's Oracle. He goes down to 5, keeping an Aired Mesa, a Lotus Petal, Mana Vault, Ride of Flame, and a Fierce Guardianship, bottoming Fluster Storm and Mnemonic Betrayal. Last but not least is Kevin on Najila. This 5 color deck's main game plan is to make mana during the combat phase with Najila's tokens, then take extra combats. He'll then repeat this process until his opponents are dead. He keeps an opening hand with Wooded Foothills, Windswept Heath, Ancient Tomb, Wishclaw Talisman, Mental Misstep, Chance for Glory, and Derevi. We're about to hop right into the gameplay, but before we do, leave us a comment down below letting us know who you think is going to win. And while you're down there, don't forget to check out all our links in the description. We've got a second channel where we post our podcast, links to our Patreon, links to our Discord, you name it. We've even got affiliate links, and our first one is Dragon Shield. So if you're looking to pick up any high-quality magic products, such as playmats, deck boxes, or sleeves, be sure to check out our link. We've also got a link to our Inked Gaming referral page, so if you're looking to make any custom playmats or anything of the sort, be sure to check them out as well. But that is enough talk, let's hop right into the gameplay. Yo, 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 what's up, guys? It's uh, Bar <laughs> Barvis <laughs> from the and Kevin from the C or from the Sadnos EDH podcast. I'm Kian, Kevin's over there. Um, I'm the co-host, and Kevin's one of our crew. We run a um, CDH podcast. We're found on all major uh, podcast platforms. Uh, we have a pop in Discord where you can come in, you know, talk about Hamster, shit post, you know, chill with us. You know, Flip it's a coins. great time. Flip coins, you know, it's a great time. So, you guys should go check them out. Now, let's get into this game. Looks like Ethan wins the die roll, and he starts off with his flooded strand, and then casts the mana grip that he peeled off the top. He'll then use that to cast his talisman. After this, he'll fetch and find a Tundra, and then cast his Giver of Runes, then pass the turn to Jason, who will play his Savannah, and then he'll cast his Mox Diamond, pitching his Plateau. He'll then tap his Savannah for a green, and cast his Carpet of Flowers. After this, he moves to his second main face, makes a white, and casts Deafening Silence. Kevin is not a fan of this, so he pays two life to mental misstep it, and it's countered. The turn is then passed to Kian, who starts off with his Arid Mesa. He then casts Lotus Petal, sacrifices Lotus Petal for a red to cast Rite of Flame, then uses one from that Rite of Flame to cast Mana Vault, and with one red left floating, he'll fetch for a Tundra, then tap it and his Mana Vault for mana, and cast Krom. He'll then move to combat and swing at Kevin for four commander. He'll then pass the turn to Kevin, who just plays Wooded Foothills, and then he'll pass. Ethan saves on his Mana Crypt trigger, and then shocks and Steam Vents, and then he casts the Murder Bird. Then we'll pass to Jason. Jason will start his turn off with a Carpet of Flowers trigger, which he'll make two green with thanks to Ethan having two islands. He'll then play a City of Brass, then tap for two more to cast Rocco. X is equal to one. Bird trigger, and Kevin fetches for a Badlands. And then Rocco resolves, and Jason finds an Esper Sentinel. The turn is then passed to Kian, who gets pinged by Vault on upkeep. And then we'll just pass to Kevin, who plays an Ancient Tomb, taps for three, taking two, and then we'll cast Najila. Bird trigger, and then he passes to Ethan, who saves on Mana Crypt again. On his first main phase, Ethan will cast Kedis, and then he'll move to combat and swing for three at Kevin. It'll go through, and then everyone else takes three. Ethan will then play his own Ancient Tomb on second main phase, and then he passes the turn to Jason, who, on his first main phase, will make two white with Carpet of Flowers, and he'll cast Dranith Magistrate. Bird trigger. He'll then tap for two and cast Sylvan Library, Bird and Krom trigger, and then he'll pass the turn to Kian. 
Unfortunately, he still isn't able to find another land, so he just has to pass to Kevin again, who will play his Windswept Heath, and then he'll cast a Rite of Flame. Bird Trigger and Esper Sentinel is not paid for. The Rite will then resolve, and since Kian also has a Rite of Flame in Graveyard, Kevin gets to make three red mana, and then he'll fetch with his Windswept Heath, finding a Bayou to the battlefield. He'll then float two colorless with his Ancient Tomb, and then a black with his Bayou, and then he'll cast Wishclaw Talisman, Bird and Crom Trigger, and then he'll activate Wishclaw Talisman, giving it to Ethan. And then after tutoring, Kevin will drop Dockside Extortionist. It resolves, and this gets him a total of eight treasure tokens. He'll use three of them to cast a Ranger Captain of Eos, Bird Trigger, and then when Priority hits Ethan, he decides to cast a Silence. Esper Sentinel Trigger will be paid for with an Ancient Tomb, but Kevin will respond with a Chance for Glory, another Bird Trigger. Ethan will then respond again by tapping his Talisman for a blue to Swansong it. Crom Trigger, and the Chance for Glory is countered, and then the Silence will resolve. The Ranger Captain Search will then resolve, and Kevin finds an Esper Sentinel. He'll then pass the turn to Ethan, who finally remembers to actually put the counters on his bird, and then he'll lose his Crypt Trigger on upkeep. He'll then activate Wishclaw Talisman, giving it to Kian, and then after tutoring, he'll cast Robe of the Arc Magi, taking two to his tomb, and Ethan will pay for Esper Sentinel. Kian is not a fan of this, so he'll attempt to Fierce Guardianship it, and he will pay for Esper Sentinel. Also another bird trigger. And so the robe is countered, so Ethan will move to combat and swing for 11 commander adjacent. He can't block it, and because Kedis exists, everyone else also takes 11. Ethan will then pass the turn to Jason, who draws three cards to Sylvan Library, and he'll pay four life to keep an extra card. He'll then play Verdant Catacombs, then move to combat and hit Ethan for three with Rocco. And Ethan won't block. Post combat, he fetches for a Taiga, and then he'll just pass the turn to Kian who unsurprisingly starts his turn off by activating Wishclaw Talisman. And Jason is the one who gets the empty Wishclaw. He tutors for and plays a Badlands, and then uses it to cast an Imperial Seal. Bird Trigger and Esper Sentinel Trigger. It is not paid for. The Seal then resolves, Kian tutors his library, and then the turn is passed to Kevin. Who will start off with an Eladomri's Call, Bird and Esper Sentinel Trigger, and the Sentinel is paid for with Ancient Tomb. He finds Grim Hireling to his hand, and he'll attempt to cast it, Krom and Bird Trigger. After this, he moves to combat, and he'll swing Ranger Captain of Eos at Jason, and then the 2-2 bird at Ethan. Jason could deny Kevin two treasures here by chump blocking, but he asks Kevin, hey, if I let this through, will you kill the Giver of Runes? And Kevin says yes. So, damage will go through, and Kevin gets to make four treasure tokens. Post-combat, Kevin will sacrifice a total of three treasures to activate Grim Hireling's ability to give Giver of Runes minus two minus two till end of turn. Ethan will respond by activating Giver to give a shy protection from white till end of turn. Jason will respond by Path to Exiling Ishai. It'll resolve, and Ethan fails to find a basic land. Continuing on, Kevin uses his last treasure to cast Esper Sentinel, and then he'll pass the turn to Ethan, who wins his Crypt Trigger again, and then he drops Smothering Tithe. Two Esper Sentinel triggers, and Ethan pays for them both with Ancient Tomb, and then he'll pass the turn to Jason, who does not care about the Tithe and still draws three cards with his Sylvan Library. He doesn't pay for any life or any Smothering Tithe triggers. Jason will then move to combat, and he'll swing three at Kian, who just takes the commander damage. Post-combat, Jason will make three green mana with his Carpet of Flowers, and then he'll use that three to cast Circle Dream Struid. He'll then cast Wirewood Symbiote, which triggers Krom, and Ethan misses a Tithe trigger. The turn is then passed to Kian, who doesn't pay for Smothering Tithe on draw step, and then he slams down his Dockside Extortionist. Ethan decides to respond by floating four blue, and then Kevin will sacrifice his Ranger Captain of Eos. Dockside will then resolve, and Artifact Enchantment cost is nine. So, nine treasure tokens are made. He'll then sacrifice two of them to cast Grand Abolisher, and then the turn is passed to Kevin, who doesn't pay for Smothering Tithe on draw step, and then he moves to combat, and starts off by swinging his 2-2 bird at Jason, and then everything else at Ethan. Najila makes a warrior, which also goes at Ethan. Before blocks, Jason will flash in Endurance. It'll resolve, and its ETB trigger will make Kian put his graveyard to the bottom of his library. Now moving on to blocks, Ethan blocks Esper Sentinel with Kedis, and Jason blocks the 2-2 bird with his Endurance. And then Ethan takes 8 damage, and Kevin gets 2 treasure tokens. After this, Kevin will cast Savine's Reclamation targeting Ranger Captain of Eos, and he won't pay for Esper Sentinel, and Jason doesn't pay for Smothering Tithe. It resolves, and when the Captain enters the battlefield, Kevin searches for Ragavan and passes while searching. Kian stays on end step though, and flashes in a Dress Down, and doesn't pay for Esper Sentinel. And Ethan misses the Tithe tax, and then Dress Down resolves, and Kian draws a card. And Smothering Tithe is not paid for this time, and then still on end step, Kian will cast Final Fortune. There are no responses, so Final Fortune will resolve. Priority will then go around the table at this end step, and then Kian will move to his turn. Smothering Tithe is not paid for on draw step, and then Kian will cast Culling the Weak, sacrificing Dockside Extortionist. This gets him four black mana. 
He'll then cast Intuition, targeting Ethan. The three tutored four cards are Underworld Breach, Lion's Eye Diamond, and Dark Ritual. There's a discussion at the table, and ultimately, Ethan decides to give Kian Dark Ritual. The other two go to the graveyard, and then Kian immediately casts Dark Ritual. He'll then cast Savine's Reclamation, getting Underworld Breach back to the battlefield, and then with a storm count of four, he casts Brain Freeze, and he has all copies target himself. There are no responses around the table, and in case you didn't know, this puts him in the position to win. After he mills those 15 cards, he can recast Lion's Eye Diamond by just exiling three cards from his graveyard. He'll discard his hand and crack it for three blue mana, and then he'll repeat the process, netting himself another three blue mana. After this, he'll use two of that mana and exile three cards from his graveyard to cast Brain Freeze again, targeting himself. He can essentially keep casting Brain Freeze on himself until he mills himself out, and then can cast the Thassa's Oracle from his graveyard and win the game. And that's exactly what he does. Ah, but there's a dress down on the field, you say? Well, that's not really a problem. Keen holds priority with Thoracle on the stack, and then casts the Chain of Vapor in his graveyard, bouncing it back to his hand, and then the Thoracle will resolve, and he wins the game. So, <laughs> congratulations, man. That was awesome. Well, everyone, there you have it. Let us know what you thought down in the comments below. I personally thought that that was a really cool way to win with Thassa's Oracle. I know some of you really hate the card, but you gotta admit, it's much nicer when Demonic Consultation isn't involved. And I personally really love Underworld Breach Lines. So yeah, let us know what you thought down in the comments below. While you're down there, be sure to check out all our links. Please check out Sadnaz, they're awesome. Ethan and Jason both said you guys were amazing to play with. So thank you guys for joining us for this game. To all of you who are watching, that's all for now. I'll be signing off. I hope you all have a smooth day.